Tamaranui Domain, 6,000 people have turned up to see the New Zealand Axemen's Championships. There's £1,000 in prize money to be won today, and axes are carefully tested and given a final honing. Special racing axes are used in contests, and they're so sharp you could shave with them. That's if you really wanted to. Kai Walker blocks are used for the chopping, and their size is carefully checked before they're set up for the first event. And they're off after the big purse of the day. It's the Tom Renui Open Handicap and the first prize is £100 and a trophy worth £25. There's no time to waste here. And first to finish is Jim Whitaker of Raurimu, one of the limit men. Next event is the underhand chop. Competitors stand on an 18-inch log and cut between their feet. This calls for perfect timing and placements. There's no room for mistakes here. But New Zealand Axemen are among the world's best and they know just what they're doing, we hope. That's over and they get ready for the sawing. Saws are oiled up and the white pine blocks checked over. It's a good start. The saws bite deep and they swing into a steady rhythm. This is a two-man event, and it's teamwork that counts. A lifetime in the bush has trained men like these, skilled workers in one of the most important industries in the country. And now numbers are drawn from a hat for the blocks for the last and fastest chop of the day. It's the New Zealand 12-inch standing block championship, and competitors carefully mark in where the first cuts will be made. They get set, and they're off. Here's Wally Jones of Tamaranui, holder of the unofficial world's record of 13 seconds for a 12-inch block. I'll stick to the firewood class myself. His brother, Tory Jones, is another world-class axeman. Tory's chopping beautifully, and he goes on to win the New Zealand 12-inch championship. Wally is close behind, and the Jones brothers have done it again. From February to September, oysters are in season, and the bluff oyster boats manoeuvre over the dredging grounds. A dredge of steel mesh is drawn over the sea floor and then raised to the surface. Small oysters fall back through the mesh, and the bulk of the catch is hauled aboard. On the run back to the bluff, the oysters are sorted and roughly cleaned. It's cold, wet work, but in a week's dredging, the trawlers may bring in 800 sacks of the shellfish.
Underneath the wharf at Bluff, the oysters are bagged on a platform that is uncovered at low tide. The sacks are doused in the sea before raiding to the market. Oysters live for six years, but once they're dredged, they must be kept fresh until they're packed and canned. Some of this catch will go direct to shops, the remainder to the canning factory. At the canning factory, these workers flip open about 16 oysters a minute and think nothing of it. They say that a dozen of these oysters and a bottle of stout will take you a long way. Freshly caught, canned and labelled, they're on their way to the connoisseurs. Mm -hmm.